Alright guys, welcome to the very first video of this course. Now the first thing, before we move on to cover advanced topics in Python, you need to have a Python installed on your machine. So first of all, you need to download it. So open your internet browser that you have and go to this link python.org slash downloads and now you need to click on this option download python 3.9 point something to download python on your computer. Now make sure that you have python 3 which is the latest version and we're gonna be using it in this course as well because python 2 is not used a lot anymore and officially it is not properly managed by the developers of python programming language. So download python 3 so I'm not going to download it because I already have downloaded it in my computer but in your case just click on this option download python 3 point something to download python on your computer. So once you are done with the downloading part go to the download section in your computer and start installing python in your computer. It is actually a very simple process just click next next a couple of times and it will be successfully installed on your computer. So once you have successfully installed python you can then start writing on the python code directly from your command line or terminal but that will be a lot difficult and tedious so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna install an IDE or integrated development environment where writing in your code will be at least 8000 times more easier than writing your python code in command line or terminal. Now you can choose any IDE like uh, Visual Studio, Sublime or even Notepad but the one I'm gonna be using is known as PyCharm. So if you also want to use PyCharm as well then uh, go to this link which says jetbrains.com slash pycharm slash downloads slash hash section equal to well depending on your operating system you, if you're using windows then you need to click on this option windows and if you're using mac then you need to click on this option mac and then similarly if you're using linux then you need to click on this option linux so since i'm using windows i'll just click on this option uh, windows now in here you can see that we have two versions of pycharm available the one is the professional version which is paid while the second one is the community version. So you need to click on this option download which is under the community version to start downloading PyCharm on your computer. Well I'm gonna be using the professional version because I love using it but anything that we will do uh, with the professional version in this course can also be done with the community version. Well I'm using the prof professional version because uh, I have to do some web related tasks in Python uh, but uh, in your case you need to click on this option download which is under the community version to start downloading PyCharm on your computer absolutely free of cost. So again I'm not going to download it because I already have it on my computer. So once you have successfully uh, downloaded PyCharm then again go to the download section and start installing PyCharm on your computer as well. So again it is, uh, it is actually a very simple process just click next next a couple of times and it will be successfully installed on your computer as well. So once we have successfully installed PyCharm then in here you can just search for PyCharm. So just click on this option JetBrains or PyCharm and once you open it you should see a screen which looks something like this. Well your screen might be a little different from mine because I'm using the professional version but the basic idea is exactly the same. Now the first thing uh, we need to do here is uh, first of all to create a python project. So in here just click on this option file and then just click on this option new project and now in here you can just name your project. So well you can just name your project anything you want um, but let's say that I will just name my project as python and now in order to create that project just click on this option create. Well I'm not going to create this project because I already have created one project named uh, python tutorials which, uh, which you can see right here as well but in your case just click on this option create to create that python project. Alright so once uh, you create your python project you need to have a python file inside it where you can just start writing your python code. So in order to create that python file just cl uh, right click on your project and just click on this option new and now in here you need to create a python file. So just click on this option python file and now in here you can just name your python file anything you want. So let's say I will just name it as first video tutorial and now just click on this option or hit enter to just uh, create that file inside your project. So you have this project named python tutorials and now inside uh, that project you have this file named a uh, first video tutorial.py. Now in here you can just start writing your python code but we're gonna start writing uh, our python code uh, from the next video. So if you have any problem installing python or pycharm on your computer then feel free to contact me through email 
and I will definitely get back to you as soon as I can. Now up to the next video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Okay, so before we move on, we first of all need to install all the modules that we're going to need in making this application. So open your command line if you're using Windows and open your terminal if you're using Mac or Linux. But if you're using PyCharm, then you can open your terminal inside of it by just clicking on this option which just says terminal right here. And it will just open this terminal right here on inside of PyCharm. Okay, now the first module that we need to install is the GeoPy module. So to install it, just simply type pip install and then name this module which is the GeoPy module. And now hit the enter button and it will start installing that module on your computer. So I'm not going to hit the enter button because I already have installed this module on my computer. But in your case, just hit the enter button to install this module on your computer. And make sure that you have your internet connection before you install any of the module. Okay, so that's the first module. And now the second module that we need to install is the time zone finder module. So just simply type pip install and then time zone finder and hit the enter button and it will start installing that module on your computer as well. Okay, now the next module that we need to install is the request module. So right in here is simply type pip install and then name this module which is the request module. And again, hit the enter button and it will start installing that module on your computer as well. And now the next module that we need to install is the PyTZ module. So just simply type pip install and then tz and hit the enter button. And again, it will start installing that module as well. And now, and now the last module that we need to install is the uh, pill module. So just simply type pip install uh, and then uh, the name of this module, which is the pill module. And now hit the enter button to install this module on your computer as well. So again, uh, make sure that you have your internet connection before you install any of this module because they do require the internet connection. Okay, so um, uh, make sure that you have installed all of this module before you move on. But if you have any problem installing any of this module, then just let me know and I'll just get back to you as, as soon as possible. So um, if you, and once you have installed all of this module, you are now up and ready to make this application in Python. Okay, now we're going to be importing each and everything that we're going to need in making this application. Uh, so let's do it. So right in here, first of all, we'll just import each and everything from Tkinter. So right in here, let's say that from Tkinter, we're just going to import uh, each and everything. Okay, next, we're just going to be importing the Tkinter module. So from import Tkinter and in chart, we're just going to be using it as Tkm. Okay, next, we're just going to be importing a class from the GeoPy module that we've installed in the previous video. So right in here, I will just say that from GeoPy.GeoCoder, we're just going to be importing a class Nominatem. Okay, next, we're just going to be importing um, the time zone finder class from the time zone finder module that we've installed in the previous video as well. So right in here, I'll just say that from time zone finder, we're just going to be importing this class time zone finder. Okay, next, uh, we're just going to be importing uh, each and everything from the date time module. So from date time, we're just going to import each and everything. Okay, so this module is actually built into Python. So you do not need to install it separately. Okay, next, we're just going to be importing the request um, for module that we have installed in the previous video as well. Next, we're just going to be importing the PyTZ module that we've installed previously as well. And next, uh, we're just going to be importing two things from the um, pill module that we've installed in the previous video as well. So from pill, we just need to import two things. The first one is the image, and then the second one is the image TKM. Okay, so these are all the modules that we're gonna actually need uh, in making our weather application in Python. Okay, next, um, the next step uh, is to actually create a window and then put all kinds of widgets um, on that GUI window. So let's just create that window. So first of all, I'll just create a variable. And now inside of that variable, I've just stored my window. So I can just name my window as window, or I can just name it as root. People just name it as both ways, but say that I've just named it as root and I will just put it equal to a class in Tkinter called Tkm. Now this class is actually inside the Tkinter module and uh, next I need to have my main loop method. So on uh, this main loop function and now this main loop function is actually again inside the Tkinter module and this main loop function is actually very very important. It actually updates all kinds of widgets uh, or, or it actually updates the entire window many times in one second uh, it actually updates uh, the window like 
60 to 120 times in one second. So make sure that you have your main loop function uh, or else your window won't show up. So now just by having these two lines of code, you will now have the decanter window or the GUI window uh, with some default width and height. So in here, you can now see that we have this GUI window and by default, the title is TK and then it has some default width and height, but we're just gonna be changing this height and width and then we're just gonna be changing the title as well. And then we're just gonna be setting the background color uh, for my window as well. So let's do it. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is that I'll just set the title. So right in here, I will just say that root, which is actually this um, window variable. And now uh, inside of that object, uh, I have a function which is called the title for setting the title of my window. And now inside this single or double quotation mark, I can actually set any title and say that it will be uh, the weather app title. Okay, next, uh, I actually want to resize my window using this function in the um, the Kinter class, TK class, which is the geometry. And now inside the, sing uh, inside the single or double quotation mark, I can actually give the title. So say that the uh, width is going to be 890 pixels and then the height is just going to be 470 pixels. Uh, 470 pixels and then I further want to stretch it by 300 plus 300. Okay, so that's the height and width. Um, next, um, I just want a background color for my window. So for this, I'll just use this function configure and uh, I'll just use this attribute BG. And now in here, I can actually specify any hexadecimal value after this hash inside the single double quotation mark. Uh, now say that I just want uh, a blue color for my background. So the hexadecimal value for blue is uh, 57. AD double F. Now, if you just want a different background color for your window, then you can actually Google the background color of that, uh, the hexadecimal value of that color, and uh, then just specify the value right here. Okay, and next, the next thing that I want is that since in here I have specified uh, height and width, now I do not want to resize my height and width once I actually execute this application. So, for this, what I can just do is that I can actually use this. Uh, method uh, which is the resizable method and in here I'll just say that I do not want to resize my window along x uh, or horizontally so uh, false and then I do not want my window to be resized along y-axis or vertically so in here I can specify false as well okay so yeah these are all the things that we need to be doing and now let's just execute this application and now in here you're going to see that the height and width is now changed to something else and then we have a blue background for um this window and then you're going to see that the title is changed to weather app and uh, the, another thing you need to see is that since in here we have specified that we i do not want my window to be resized along x and y axis that is why i've set its value equal to false and you're going to see that i just cannot resize it so in here you're going to see that i just cannot resize it along x axis or i just cannot resize it along y axis okay so now in the coming videos uh, we're just going to start putting different widgets on this in gui window
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is that I will actually create a search box so that the user can search uh, any place that he want to search the temperature, humidity, pressure, wind speed, uh, wind speed off. So let's do it. So what I'm going to do is that again, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to actually load a uh, load search box. So right in here, first of all, I just had a command and just say that I'm just going to create a search box. So search box and then now right in here, let me just minimize the screen and then yeah. Okay, so uh, I'll just say that this time this is going to be my search image. So just named it a search image, and this is going to be equal to photo image, and then the file of it is just going to be images slash a round rectangle three dot png. Okay, so now we have loaded that a search image, and now what I'm going to do is that I'll just create another variable my image, and that's just going to be equal to label. And the image uh, of that label um, is just going to be basically this uh, search image. So search image, um, but I want some background color of it as well. So the background color is just going to be hexadecimal value, uh, which is uh, 57 AD FM. Okay, so that's the label. And now we just want to put this image. <laughs> so my image dot this and I just want to place it at a certain location. So um, along the x-axis it will be 270 pixels and along y-axis it will be 120 pixels. Okay, so um, now let me just execute it to show that to you. Okay, so now you're going to see that we have this image, uh, but we just can't write anything inside of it. So now what I'm going to do is that, um, first of all, let's just create, uh, let's just put a weather image on that, uh, on that search box. So right in here, um, in here, uh, what I'm going to do is just create a uh, um, basically I'll just load another image and I'll just name this image as weather image. You can just name it anything you want. Just going to photo image uh, and then the final page is going to be uh, instead of this folder, this folder of images and then it should be uh, layer um, 7.png. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is that I want to say that uh, I'll just create basically a label and I'll just name this label as with weather image, it's going to be equal to the label. And now, what I'm going to do is that since I want this label to be time of window, and then uh, the image uh, of that label, so image uh, of that label is just going to be my uh, this on uh, this image that I've loaded. So it's going to be weather image, <clears throat> and so next I just want the background of it as well. So background is just going to be. Uh, a hexadecimal value which is um, 20, 32, uh, 43. Okay, so that's the background thing. And now we just want to put it on our, um, our windows at the right place. So place, and now we want to place it. We just want to place it 290 pixels along x axis and along y axis. It should be 127 pixels. Okay, so um, now let me just execute this thing to show that uh, weather image. And here you can see that you can see uh, this weather image right here on your search box. And now, since in here we just can't write anything inside of this search box, so what I'm going to do is that I will just create um, an entry field, uh, basically the Kinder entry field, so that the user can actually start writing inside of this thing. It, the user can actually search any location. Uh, by writing something, uh, by writing some location inside of that search box. So let's do it. So in here, uh, I'm going to actually create an entry field. So we're just going to create it using the building class in the Kinder called entry. So we'll just name this entry field as a text field. You can just name it if you want. It's going to be equal to this class in the Kinder, which is the entry class. And um, since I want this entry to be inside of my window, so root. And just want to center it. So justify it is going to be equal to uh, center. And uh, we just want to give some width of it. So width of it is going to be 15 pixels. And then we just want to give it some font. Um, so font is just going to be uh, Poppins. Uh, that's the font's name. And the font size. This is going to be 25 pixels and it should be um, bold. Okay, so it should be bold. Okay, uh, next, uh, what I'm going to do is that uh, I just want to set the background color of it as well. So the background color is just going to be 20, 32, 43. 
Okay, finally, uh, I'll just move to the next slide to make sure everything is visible. And I will just say that the border of it is going to be uh, zero because I just don't want any border of it. Uh, and then the foreground color of it is going to be white. Okay, so that's the entry field that we have created. And now we just need to put this entry field at the right place. So I will just say that um, text field dot place and um, it should be uh, 370 pixels along x axis uh, and then along y axis it should be 130 pixels. Okay, so um, yeah, that's all I need to do. So now let's just execute this application and uh, now in here you can see that I can just start writing anything that I want. So for example, just want to search uh, the weather of New York or, um, or Dubai or any location I want, so I can actually write that thing uh, inside, of, uh, inside of that entry field. Okay, so now uh, you can just see that when you execute this application, by default, my cursor is actually not focused. I actually have to focus it by myself. But So what I'm going to do is that right here, uh, what I'm going to do is say that text field dot focus. And what it will do is that it will actually make my cursor focused by default. Oops, 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 oops. To execute it, okay, so execute, and now you're gonna see that I haven't done anything. Uh, I still can actually write it because my cursor is now being focused. Okay, so now finally, what I'm gonna do is that I will actually create. Uh, so say that I will just write uh, New York right here. Uh, now I should have an option, an icon of search uh, right here, so so that I can actually click on it, and then it can actually display the weather of New York to me. So for this, what I'm gonna do. Then I actually need to create, uh, I actually need to load an image with my search icon. So I'll just name this image as search icon. You can just name it anything you want. So search icon is just going to be equal to the photo image. Uh, and then the file of it is just going to be images and then slash uh, layer 6.png. Okay, so next it just should, should be uh, a label in which we just put that image. So I'll just name this empty label as my image. My image is called icon. It's going to be equal to a button. So he's using this built in class and take the call button. Um, the image uh, of it is just going to be my search icon. So search icon. And uh, the border width of which is just going to be zero. Um, and what's going to be the cursor of it? So the cursor of it is just going to be and two and two. So don't worry about this thing. It's just simply a certain kind of cursor. Um, that's going to be the cursor. And so next, what is going to be the background color? So the background color is just going to be a hexadecimal value which is 20, 32, 43. Okay, so that's the background color. And um, yeah, I think that's what we need to be doing. And now all we just need to be is to actually put this image, this my image icon at the right place using this function uh, place. And it should be uh, 645 pixels along X axis. And um, for Y axis, it should be one point five pixels, and yeah, that's all we need to be doing. And now let's just execute this application. And now you're gonna see that we, uh, you're gonna see that we have the search icon. So now I just uh, say that New York, uh, New York, and I just click on this search icon. Uh, obviously, it's not doing anything, but you can see it's actually clickable. Um, later on, once I oh, later on in this application. Uh, when I click on that search icon, then what it's going to do is it's just going to display the weather of New York or uh, any city or place that I enter right here in this um, entry field or inside of the search box. Okay, now we're going to be creating bottom boxes, and the bottom boxes are for displaying not only the weather of the current day but for the coming days as well. Okay, so right in here, we're just going to create all of these bottom boxes. So I will have two types of bottom boxes. So first of all, I'll just add a command and I'll just say that these are bottom boxes. Uh, okay, so the first, um, I will have two types of bottom boxes. So I will actually load two different kind, two different images. 
So um, the first one, uh, I will just name it as first box and I'm just gonna put it equal to photo image and then define of it, it's just going to be equal to images uh, slash uh, rounded rectangle uh, two dot PNG. And then the second box is just going to be named as second box. Uh, I'm just gonna put it equal to uh photo image and then the file of it is just going to be instead of this folder images and then rounded rectangle to copy.png okay so these are two types of boxes and now what i'm going to do is that i will actually be creating uh, labels and um, i will be putting these images um basically these uh, two types of images on these labels so right in here uh, i'll just say that uh, label and uh, well why not actually create a separate frame and then put all of these bottom uh, bottom boxes on that frame so right in here uh, let's just create that frame uh yep let's just create it right here okay so um, uh i will just name that frame as frame and i'm just going to put it equal to this built-in class and tick enter called frame and this frame should be inside of my window so root and then the width of this frame is just going to be uh, 900 pixels and then the height of it is just going to be 180 pixels and then what's going to be the background color so the background color is just going to be hexadecimal value 21 uh 21 and 20 that's the hexadecimal, hexadecimal value of that frame and now I actually want back this frame so uh, frame dot uh back um and i just want to basically place it on both sides so size is going to be equal to uh basically the bottom side so size is going to be equal to bottom okay so now what i'm going to do is that i will actually be putting all of these boxes um, inside of that frame. So I'll actually be creating uh, these labels and these labels should now be inside of my frame. So remember that my frame is actually inside of my window or root uh, while my these labels are actually inside of my frame. So I hope it is actually making sense. Not so technical and um, uh, so, uh, and then the image, so the image, of it is just going to be uh first box and then the background color uh it's just going to be hexadecimal value 21 21 and then 20 uh and then actually want to place it so place uh where do i want to place it so i want to place it x-axis along 30 pixels along x-axis and then 20 pixels along y-axis okay so now what i'm going to do is that i will actually copy it and i actually need to paste it uh five times yeah one two three four five okay so now what i'm gonna do is i just change it to second box uh, and then second box uh and then second box and then second box so uh, and then finally second box as well okay now all i just need to do is to actually change on uh, these locations so um, this one it should be uh 300 pixels and then this one should be um, 30 pixels so 30 pixels and all of these will be at 30 pixels along y-axis so 30 pixels along y-axis and uh, these ones should be 400 pixels and then 500 pixels and then um 600 pixels uh 600 pixels on 6000 obviously and then 7700 pixels okay so one two three four five six okay so one two three four five okay so i actually need to paste it one more time so copy it and then just paste it right in here and uh, this one is just going to be 800 pixels okay so just remember this second box let me just show you the uh, image so the this one is actually my round rectangle 2.png and this one is actually the copy of it so um, on this uh, round rectangle i'm going to actually display the weather of the current day while on these boxes uh, that is around round, round rounded rectangle to copy.png i'm going to actually place the uh, weather of the coming days of the coming uh, six days so 
this one is actually for displaying the weather of the current day and then this one is actually for displaying the weather of the coming six days okay so now let me just close it and uh, since now i have actually placed it i can now execute my application to show you all of these boxes and now you can just see that first of all you can just see that we have this um big frame right here and then on that frame first of all we have that um basically this image which is our first image first box first box image which is the rounded rectangle 2.png and then uh, on the remaining labels there is all of these remaining labels except this label we have the second box so in here you can one two three four five six so in here we're just going to display the weather of the current day and then in here we're just going to display the weather of the coming six days so this one will be the current day and this will be the day one day two day three day four day five and day six one there okay so our weather app will actually display the weather of the uh of complete one week okay so um, now what i'm going to do is that uh, i will actually be creating a clock so on that clock we'll be displaying the weather basically the timing the time and then the time zone of the current place that we have searched so right in here i'm just going to say that i'm just going to be basically displaying clock and uh, on that clock we will be placing time so let's say that here we will place time okay so now let me just scroll it down to make sure everything is visible and now let's create a clock so clock is just going to be equal to uh, a label and this font is to be inside of my root and then the font of it is just going to be helvetica and then what is going to be the font size font size will be 30 pixels and it should be bold so bold should actually go inside of this single quotation mark so bold and what is getting this error right here so i think yep it should be in here and here actually closed okay so that's the font and uh, next what's going to be foreground color foreground color is just going to be uh white uh and then the background color it's just going to be hexadecimal value and it's just going to be uh 57 uh ad ff okay so that's it and now let's just put it on um or on our uh window so label dot place uh i just want to place it 30 pixels along x-axis and then 20 pixels along y-axis okay uh, so um basically we haven't put any text on it so let's just say that by default we'll be just putting some kind of text and it's just going to be a time and say that it will be 2 30 pm okay so actually this argument should be the first one so let me just cut it and let me just paste it right in here oops oh my goodness okay so it should be root uh, and then yeah okay so now let me just execute um and you should be able to see you can see that uh, it is 2 30 pm but obviously that time it is going to be the time that we have searched right here so for example if i just searched uh new york then just going to display the time of uh new york um and not basically the tags so it is actually not dynamic but we're just going to make it dynamic depending upon the city or place that we have searched right here so for now this tag should uh, be nothing so i'm going to actually removing this attribute of text right here and for now uh i'm just gonna put it at 700 pixels uh, so that it's actually not visible on my screen okay so that's the clock and um now um i'm gonna be actually basically creating a, a label for my time zone as well so let me just minimize this thing as well, this thing and um i'll just say that uh time zone is just going to be equal to a label and this label should be created on my root and then the font of it is just going to be uh actually this thing and then alvetica and then what's just going to be font size it's in 20 pixels and uh, the foreground color is just going to be white uh, and then the background color is just going to be hexadecimal value which is uh 57 ad ff okay so now let's just put it on our on on this on a specific place on our window so time zone dot uh place and along x-axis 
uh, again this thing will not be visible on my screen at this moment because the time zone will be visible once i actually search uh, a specific location um using the search box so seven, at this point it could not be visible so x will be 700 pixel and y is it's going to be 20 pixels and um, now similarly i just want to display the longitude and latitude of that place that i've searched as well so i will just create a separate label for it as well and that's just i'll just name it as longitude latitude so long lat that actually means longitude latitude it's going to be equal to a label um and again roots and uh, the font of it is just going to be all these things let me just copy it so uh, copy and i'm just going to paste it right in here and um, so that is actually a longitude latitude not place and again it will also be not be visible because we just want to display the uh, longitude latitude of a certain place that we have searched okay so um, along y-axis it will be 50 pixels uh, okay so it should be y uh, y-axis okay so i'm still getting this error yeah it's gone okay so yeah that's all we need to be doing and uh, now just execute this application obviously we are actually seeing nothing uh in place of time zone and longitude latitude and that's because it is actually at this point it is actually not visible but um we're just going to make it visible or we're just going to basically display certain kind of tags on this time zone in the long longitude long longitude and latitude depending upon the city or place the user has searched using this search box so when the user actually click on that search box only then it is going to basically display the uh time and longitude latitude of that specific location that the user has searched okay so now what we're going to do is that when the user will type any address in this uh input field or text field and then click on this search icon button then what it's going to do is that it will actually get um the weather data location of that place like for example where that place is actually uh, actually located what is the longitude and latitude of that place and then what is the local time in the in that place so this is what we're going to be doing in this video so right in here we have this search icon so when this gets actually pressed first of all it will actually get uh, the name of the city or country um that the user has typed right in here and then it will actually call a function and that function will actually take the job of doing all the stuff that we want to do in this video so right in here we have uh, basically this uh search icon image uh in the form of a button and now when this button gets pressed we want to invoke a function let's say that I'm just using this attribute command it's just going to be equal to get weather now this is actually going to be a function that we haven't created yet um but we're just going to create it right now and make sure that you just do not use these two parentheses right here because we are not calling this function we are just um specifying the reference address of that function okay so um, whenever this uh, button gets pressed it's actually going to invoke a function that we're just going to create right here and this function and yeah this is what we're just going to do okay so first of all uh, i will be getting the text that the user has input in the text field so um, i'm just going to create a variable and you will store the text uh, with the name of the city or country or any address so city is going to be equal to text field which is the name of our text field dot and what this get function will do is that it will actually get whatever we have inside the text field and then store it in this variable city okay so now we have the city and now what we're going to do is that we just want to locate the city so i'll just say that let's create a variable and i will just say that uh geolocator is just going to be equal to uh nominal in canal that we have imported uh previous team and now what this nominatum uh, nominatum do is that it actually get the coordinate of a specific uh address uh city country or uh, or any address all across the globe using uh some using different data sources so the data source that we want to use uh is basically so let's say the user agent is just going to be equal to geo api exercises this is actually the data source um that we want to use to get uh, the coordinate of a specific address okay so geolocate is actually equal to this whole thing and now what we're going to do is that i'm just going to create another variable location this is going to be equal to geolocator which is actually this object and now with this object it is going to call a function geocode and to this geocode we want to pass uh, that city or that address uh, we have stored in this variable city 
Okay, so now uh, what I'm going to do is that I will just say that uh, opt object, uh, my obj, I'm just going to create another, another variable obj, and it is going to be equal to the time zone finder class that we previously imported from the time zone finder module. Um, and now what we're going to do is that I will just say that result is just going to be equal to obj object, uh, and then the time zone at, uh, and then the longitude. It is going to be equal to location dot uh, longitude and then latitude which is going to be equal to location dot uh, latitude okay so that is going to be the result and now uh, finally what we're going to do is that we just want to configure over time zone uh, label so this is just the uh, time zone label that we have previously created and i just want to config it so time zone i know config and the text one is going to be equal to um, my result okay so now let's just execute this application to see what we actually see in the in this time zone so let's just um execute this application and just write the name of any uh, city say that so say that it is actually new york and i'll click on the search icon Okay, so it is actually saying that it is actually in the American and then New York. So um, it is actually in the American continent and then this place, New York. Okay, so right in here, this is what this 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 thing is actually doing. That is actually first of all telling me uh, using the longitude and latitude is actually telling me uh, in which continent uh, that place is actually located and uh, then obviously what is actually the state or uh, place um, that we have searched. Uh, that we have actually typed in the um, input field or text field. Okay, so this is what it's actually doing. And now what we're going to do is that we actually want to display the longitude and latitude in degree as well. So uh, what I'm going to do is that I'll just create a variable um, and uh, let's just name this variable as, uh, well, actually, we do not need to create a variable. We just need to configure the longitude and latitude label. So previously we have created this label longitude latitude and now all we just need to do is to actually configure it. So config and uh, I'll just say that the text on it is going to be f-string um, and this f-string uh, stuff on this bracket and we just want to uh, round out around uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the longitude and latitude in degree up to some decimal points. So round on the location dot. Uh, first of all, let's just uh, see what is the latitude. Okay, so long location dot latitude, and then we just want to round it up to four decimal places. And then obviously we just need the longitude and latitude in degree. So in order to get the degree symbol, you can actually search in here degree sign, and then you can actually copy it uh, right from here. So now let's just paste it all right in here. Oops. Uh, so control B, what's wrong in here? Okay, so where it should go. Okay, so control V. Oh, okay. I think that I'm actually copying it incorrectly. So let me just copy it now. Yeah, copy and paste it right in here. Okay, so this should be that much degree uh not and, and then um just want to find out the latitude and uh, longitude as well so longitude and then location dot uh longitude and then we just want to round it up to four decimal places as well let's just say that we just want to round it up to one decimal places okay and then obviously degree sign and then it should be that much degree in ease. So it's just saying that I just want to configure my longitude latitude label and I just want to show the latitude up to one decimal places. So the latitude is just going to be that much degree north and then the latitude is going to be that much degree east. Okay, so that's the longitude and latitude label. And now the final thing that we need to do is to actually display the uh, local time or the time in that place that we have searched. Okay, so for this, uh, what I'm going to do is that I'll just create a variable uh, home and we'll just use this module ITZ that we have imported previously. And uh, from it, we're just going to call a function time zone. And this will actually help us get the time of that location. So um, in here, we have the longitude and latitude of that place in this variable result. So we're just going to pass this thing so that we can actually get the exact time. Uh, 
of that place. Okay, so um, that's going to be equal to home. And now we're just going to find out the local time. So we're going to create a variable and just name it as local time. And this is going to be equal to um, this module date time or data time date time. We previously imported this module uh, dot now. Okay, so obviously we just need to pass this variable home. And now what it will do is that it will actually get, so in here we're actually getting the information, we're actually um, just providing this this variable home, all the information that is the longitude and latitude, uh, or that is the, in which continent that place is located, and then what is the name of that place, and we're storing in this variable home, and then we're just saying that, what is the uh, date and time at this point, uh, of basically the of that place simple dimple and uh, now let's going to create another variable the runtime uh, it's just going to be equal to i just want to display it uh, with some uh, specific format so i'll just say that my load time dot strf time and then i just want to display it in cell format and that's going to be percentage i and then uh this column and then percentage um, minutes and I want to display the uh, the AM and PM as well. So I'm just saying percentage PM. Okay, so it will actually display the local time in that place in this format. Okay, so now finally we have um, the current time in that place in this variable current time. And now all we just need to do is to actually. So previously we have created our clock. So we have created our clock, this clock label right here, in which we just gonna display our, um, in, in which we can just display our local time uh, in that place. And now we just need to configure that, uh, configure our clock label. So we'll just say that clock dot fake and the text or it's just going to be my current time. Okay, so yeah, that's all we need to be doing. And um, now let's just execute this application and um, say that we'll just search uh, New York. Click on the search icon. Okay, so it's just saying it's the American continent and it is 40.7 degree north and then negative 74.0 degree east. The problem is that we're not getting the local time uh, of New York. It should have been. So here we're actually configuring a local clock uh, means that there is something wrong. We're actually not placing our clock at the right place. So um, this here clock label and we're actually placing it at the wrong place should be 30 pixels along X axis and then 20 pixels along Y axis. Okay, so now let's just search it out once again and um, Again, it's going to be New York. Search icon, and it's American New York, 40.7 degree north, like 74.0 degree east. And then the local time in, um, in New York at this time is 2:45 a.m. Okay, so now let's just search out some other place, uh, like for example, Dubai. Click on search icon, and it's actually an Asian uh, Asian continent, and then this place Dubai. And it is at uh, 25.1 degree north and then 55.2 degree east. And then the local time in this place is 10.45 a.m. Okay, now similarly, you can just search out any other place, uh, like for example, California. And now just click on the search icon. Uh, again, again, it is actually in the American continent. And then it is actually in the Los Angeles state, uh, 36.7 degree north and then negative 118.8 degree east. And then the local time in this place is uh, 11.45 p.m. Okay, so yeah, that's all we need to be doing uh, for this video now. We just can um, continue further in this application from the next video. All right, now we're just gonna be creating an API so that we can actually get permission from the weather station to get weather, uh, weather data from the weather server. So in order to create an API, uh, well, you can just go to any uh, weather website, but um, what, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be get, getting weather data from this website, which is openweathermap.org. Now, first of all, what you need to do is that you actually need to create an account on openweathermap.org. 
So just simply sign up uh, to openweathermap.org. Uh, open and once you have created uh, an account on this website, then just simply go to this link which says openweather uh, openweathermap.org slash uh, price hash weather. Okay, so there are actually um, some API that we actually need to create and some are actually paid while one of them is free as well. So uh, we're just gonna be using this free one because we're actually using it for uh, teaching purposes. But if you just want, you can actually uh, go ahead and pay for uh, getting, we getting de weather data from the weather station. Okay, so I'm gonna be using the free one and um, this free one will actually let us to call 60 calls per minute and 1 million calls per month. And this will let us to get three or uh, forecast for five days while this one and here you can see it's actually a paid one which lets you to call uh, which lets you 600 calls per minute and then 10 million calls per minute and this will actually give you uh, the current weather and then and, and then it will give you three or uh, four calls for five days while it will also give you daily forecast for 16 days as well and then you can actually check out the developer professional and then the enterprise one as well so now all we need to be doing is that we actually need to create an api and uh, depending upon um, the type of um the type of uh, subscription that you want you need to create an api for that subscription so since we're just going to be using the free one so i'm going to be getting the api key for this free one so simply click on this uh click click on this option which says get api key for this one so once you actually click on it um it will actually take you to the new tab uh which is which will look something like this so in here we are i already have created two apis which is actually this one and then this one but you can just create uh, as many apis as you want um right in here uh you can actually generate a new um new api by just simply naming this api like for example i can just name it as taylor and then just click on this generate option and would it will actually generate uh and then and then click on this option create api key form just simply click on this option right here as well and um yeah up in here you can see that it has generated this new api with this name taylor and this is now the api key okay now how we're just going to use it in our code so for this um just go ahead and just go to this um go to this um link which says uh, openweathermap.org slash forecast five and once you just go there uh in here you can see that this is actually the format that we actually need to use for our api so it is api dot um openweathermap.org slash data slash 2.5 which is the version forecast and then uh, this question mark latitude equal to this latitude well obviously this one is going to be different depending upon the location uh depending upon our look location because the longitude and latitude is different for different locations and then longitude is going to be different as well and then api equal to our api key so um, right in here one thing you just need to remember is that once you have created an api it will actually start working after uh 20 to 60 minutes you actually have to wait for um at maximum of an hour to make this api work uh, because you just start getting um uh, weather data from this api directly it won't work because it just needs some time uh to to make this api active okay so i just opened your pie charm and now right in here what we need to do is that we're just going to be creating an api and now right in here we'll just say api we'll just create a variable in which we store api and now what we need to be doing is that uh, i'm just going to actually copy this thing because we're just going to be using uh this api so make sure that you're actually right here uh, exactly at this link because this is actually the api for getting our uh, weather data from the weather station for free and this is what we have done is that uh, we have created an api for um the free version okay so now right in here i'm gonna actually paste this code uh, right in here and you know obviously this one needs to be surrounded uh with this single or either double quotation mark okay so um, we have this thing api dot um actually it should be uh https as well so 
EPS uh, and then Conan this thing and then API dot uh, open weather uh, open weather map dot org slash data 2.5 weather uh, weather cast and latitude equal to now this thing needs to be changed uh, right here okay so what I'm gonna do is that we have basically got the location right here in this variable location and now we're just gonna be getting the longitude and latitude uh, of that specific location instead of these values uh, that are uh, that are here by default so right in here i would just say that um uh the longitude is just going to be so i'm just going to get rid of this thing i'm just going to close this thing and then this thing and now right in here uh, i will just actually concatenate a string to it and i'll just say that um the latitude plus str uh and then these two brackets right here and then location so location which is actually this variable location dot um we're actually interested first of all it is actually the uh it is actually the latitude uh, yeah please for, for the latitude uh, and then uh, we actually need to concatenate this thing and then the longitude is just going to be so let me just scroll it to the left to make sure everything is visible okay so this one and now let me just get it on this thing as well and then we just need to uh yeah we just need to concatenate further a string and uh, now in here i'm just gonna say that uh location dot uh longitude and now we just need to add this plus here because we're actually concatenating a string and then finally we have this api key right in here and that is just going to be uh basically the api key that we have right in here so i'm just going to get rid of this thing and now I'll just go to this place once again and now i'm going to actually copy this thing right from here so just simply copy it so copy and i'm going to actually now paste it right in here okay so now this api is now pretty much ready so i'm going to actually double check it to make sure everything is uh fine okay so we have this thing and um and longitude and latitude all these things uh latitude equal to this thing and uh, longitude is equal to this thing and still location latitude and api ID and yep everything is just looking fine and now we have successfully created the api so as i told you that we actually need to wait for some time in order to make this api work that we have created right here so again just simply go to this um link uh, https um and then home dot open weather uh, open weather map dot org slash api keys and then in here you actually need to create and uh, generate api and then in here you can see that you can generate as, as many api keys as needed for your subscription we accumulate Accumulate the total load for for all of them. Now another thing you need to remember that um, since we're actually using the free version, so this API key is I think valid for three days. So after three days, you can generate uh, a new API key, uh, and then again after three days, uh, you just have to generate another API key because this API key will expire uh, I think after three days maybe. I'm not sure about this, but you can just check it out um, by going to um, the description of your free plan. And then in here it is written that for how long you can actually use this API key that you have generated right here. So uh, now I'm actually uh, ending this video because as I told you that it may just take um, 20 to 60 minutes uh, to make this API work. And you have to wait for that, uh, that amount of time as well um yeah just simply go ahead and uh, just create that api and we're just gonna start getting weather data from the weather station and now this api key will actually let us to get permission from the weather station so that we can get weather data from the weather server using this api key so this is api key is actually a kind of permission okay so we're just gonna start getting weather data from the weather station from the next video okay so now we're just going to start getting our data from the weather station using this api key but we just need to make one little change in this api that instead of just this forecast forecast right here we just need uh, this weather right here in this api okay so now once um you have it and now just open your um, browser and just go to this link openweathermap.org slash forecast where you have this api and here you can see that we have this json file which contain all the information about the weather like for example we can just use this json to get the current weather and then the minimum temperature maximum temperature the pressure what is the sea level humidity 
and all these things uh whether they are clouds or not and then we're just going to get information about the wind and then we're just going to um, get information about the visibility and all this stuff so first of all we actually need to get this json file and then store it in a variable so right in here when you have my charm and in here what i'm going to do is that i'm going to create a variable and i'm just name this variable as json data because uh, this variable will contain json data and now we're just going to be using this uh, module request uh, that we have previously imported um and then we just want to get an api so get and then we just want to get this api that we have stored in this variable api and then um basically we just want to get the json of this api so what it will do is that it will actually go to this link um uh, basically this link on uh, that gives from this variable api and then we'll get this json file that we have right here and now through this json file we can generate uh as uh, we, we can actually get uh any weather any weather information from this json file that we have stored in this variable json data okay so uh, first of all uh, what i'm going to do is that we will actually get uh, some current information about the weather so for example we will just get the temperature so we just say that um json data and in here you can just see that um basically this temperature so we have basically this file and uh, then or we can actually get the temperature right from here as well so it is basically this um main key and then through this main key we can actually get this temperature right from here so right in here what i can do is that i'll just say that json data which is actually this variable which contains this json file uh, and then in here you can specify that key main and then from this main i can actually get the temperature so let's just open this uh, this thing and now right in here we can actually get the temperature and then similarly we can get some uh, more information uh, like for example the humidity the pressure uh, and other things so let's just open your pie chart once again and right in here i'm just going to get first of all the humidity so humidity equal to uh json json data and then again main and then the humidity so humidity and uh, next uh, we can actually get the pressure as well so pressure equal to uh, json data and then um main and then uh this thing which is the pressure so pressure next uh we can also get uh the wind speed as well so wind uh equal to and json data and now to get the wind information it is actually right in here uh we have with the wind okay so in here we can actually get the wind speed by actually accessing this key wind and then this key speed so and this will actually tell us the speed so by default it has some value but depending upon our longitude and latitude it will actually tell us on uh, that um that the speed of the wind and then obviously temperature humidity and pressure as well so right in here you can specify wind and since we're interested to get the speed of the wind so just need to specify here speed okay next we can actually get the description uh of the of the overall overall weather so let me have to say that description uh equal to json data and then um it is actually this key uh weather uh and this is actually in the form of array so we're actually talking that we're just talking about the first array which is at index number zero and then this attribute description okay so now what we can do is that we can actually print out this whole information just to show us so by default it actually gives you the temperature in kelvin um so let's just print out first of all the temperature and then print out the humidity next i'll let's just print out the uh pressure right here and then let's just print out the wind uh, let's just print out the overall overall description as well okay so now we can actually execute this whole code and let's just see what we have so say that we just want to get the information that is the temperature humidity pressure and all these things about dubai so let's click on search and um let's just see okay so you can see that uh, the temperature in dubai at the moment is three uh three three zero four point nine six and it's actually in kelvin 
and the humidity is 45 percent the wind speed is uh one one thousand and eight pascal and then the uh, and then what, yeah the wind speed is 3.6 meter per second and then it is actually a clear sky in Dubai at this moment and then similarly you can actually go ahead and then search some other location like for example New York uh, and just click on the search icon and uh, obviously it will take just some time to get uh, the information about New York um, but obviously it's, it's just going to be different uh, than in case of Dubai because it will have different temperature, different wind speed, different pressure um well then just see we have to wait because it will take some time to get okay so in here you can just see that it has got and the local time in new york at this moment is uh, 2 20 a.m uh let me just close it right from here and in here you can just see that uh so the temperature in new york is 289.11 kelvin the humidity is 52 percent the uh, pressure is this thing and then the wind speed is this thing and in new york there's also a clear sky okay so this is how so now we have just got this information about um from the weather station about two different cities using this api so depending upon the uh, longitude and latitude it will actually give us the, the information about the current city now you can just search on the weather information about your city you are living in it will give you uh, the exact detail uh, about your city okay so now we're just going to be putting the data that we have got from the weather station next to temperature humidity pressure wind speed description so what we're going to do is that we will be creating labels and then we're just going to be putting labels next to all these things so let's just do it so right in here we can actually create labels uh, outside of this function uh, and we can just do it somewhere right here yeah uh, above this main loop so now let me just minimize it and um, so first of all i will just create a label for temperature so I'll just name it as t and then it's pretty cool to be split in class label and uh, this is going to be inside world root and then the font of it is just going to be whole um, Vatica, and then the font size is going to be 11 pixels and then what is going to be the foreground color so the foreground color is just going to be uh white uh next what is going to be the background color so the background color is just going to be a hexadecimal value which is going to be 20 32 and then 43 okay so now we have this label now all we need to do is to actually put it uh, on uh, in the exact place so t dot place and we just want to put it uh, 150 pixels along x axis and then 120 pixels along y axis okay so now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to actually copy this line of code and i'm going to actually paste it uh, one two three four times so one two three times so this one is actually the temperature label and now this one is just going to be the humidity label so i just name it as h um and then in here we just need to do not need to make any changes uh, but in here we just need to make some changes and this should be 140 pixels along y-axis so that's the humidity and next we will have pressure so p and then in here we have p as well and then here we're just going to put it 160 pixels along y-axis uh, and then we will have the wind so w and w as well and then this one it should be y pixels along y-axis and then the final one is just going to be d so description description and then this one should be at uh 200 pixels along y-axis okay so now we have all these labels now finally we just need to uh so basically in here but now uh, there is actually no text on these labels but now we're just going to configure these labels so right in here we're actually printing these um the temperature humidity and all these things but now we're just going to be actually config configuring these labels so that we can actually see it on our uh, GUI. So right in here, I will just say that first of all, configure the temperature label and uh, put the text. So put the text on it. Uh, the text variable. Put the text to uh, temp. Uh, temp, and then we just want to say that it's just going to be. So right in here, uh, we just need degree. 
uh, or it should be actually Cal1. So Cal1, the temperature, and uh, next it's just going to be the humidity. So H dot config, uh, and then the text on it is just going to be uh, humidity. Uh, so right in here it says showing the humidity. Then it is going to be the percentage. So where is my percent? Okay, so right in here, and then uh, it will be the pressure. So config, and then the text on it is just going to be uh, pressure, and so the unit by default is sink of Pascal. Okay, so that's the uh, pressure, and uh, next we will have wind. So w dot config, and then the text on it is just going to be uh when and then uh, by default its value is in meter per second okay so that's the when and then we can actually config and then text which is going to be on uh, description uh well there is a no need for this because we just want to say description all right so yeah that's all we need to be doing and now let's just execute this application and uh, by the way if you just want to get rid of this thing right now you can actually do it as well and let's just remove all these white spaces okay so now let's just execute this application and um, say that we just want to get the weather information about dubai and now let's press on the search icon right here and obviously it would take just some time to get on uh, the weather from the weather station from the okay so right, right in here you can just see that we're actually seeing it right here the temperature in dubai is 304 0.96 kelvin humidity is 45 percent the pressure is 108 I don't know what this H actually means, um, but this is actually a physical uh, physics unit uh, for pressure. And then P actually means Pascal. Wind speed is 3.6 meter per second. And again, uh, today it is a clear sky in Dubai. And if you're in Dubai uh, uh, at today, then you will just see that it is actually a clear sky in Dubai. Okay, so now we have actually put all this information and this is what uh, we actually need to do for this video. Okay, so in here you're going to see that previously we had created these cells and now we're just going to be creating frames inside of it and then inside of these frames we're going to be putting weather data. So let's just do it. So right in here, let me just first of all add a comment right here and it is actually my first uh, first cell and then in here it is going to be in total seven cells. So one, two, three, four and then five and then six and then seven. So let me just change it to uh, second and let me just change it to uh, third and let me just change it to fourth, fourth and then let me just change it to fifth and let me just change it to sixth, uh, so six and then let me just change it to uh, seventh. Okay, so now right in here, we're just going to be creating frames. So in here, I will just name my first frame as, so let me just first of all minimize this thing. Okay, so we just name it my first frame as uh, first frame and we're going to go build in class and take into a frame and then this one is going to be inside of my root. The width of it is just going to be 230 pixels and then the height of it is just going to be 132 pixels and then the background color of it is just going to be uh, say that for now, we're just going to put it equal to Y just to show you this frame. Uh, next, we're just going to be putting this frame. So first frame dot uh, place. Uh, we're just going to be putting it X axis along X three with three pixels along X axis and uh, three hundred fifteen pixels along Y axis. Okay, so now let me just execute this application to show you this frame. And in here, you're going to see that we have now this frame inside of this cell. And now inside of this frame, we're just going to be putting weather data. Okay, so let let's just first of all do it for the other cells as well so let me just copy and paste and we're just going to change it to uh second frame and then we're going to change it to second frame so second frame and then it's just going to have a different height and width uh, so and here it's just going to be width is just going to be what is going to the width so width is just going to be 70 pixels uh yeah this is going to be 70 pixels and then the height of it is just going to be 115 pixels so 115 pixels and then we just want to place it at a different location so it should be x axis along should be 305 along x axis and then 
along y-axis it should be 325 pixels along y-axis and now let me just execute this so let me just execute and you can just see that we have another frame inside of this cell okay now similarly we'll just do it for so let me just copy this thing now and let me just minimize the screen and let me just paste it and now we're just going to change it to uh third frame so right in here it will be third frame and then in here it is going to be change it to third frame as well and the width is just going to be the same the height is going to be the same as well but this time along x-axis it will be 45 pixels along y-axis okay so um, we're just getting the center right here uh unresolved have a third frame so again the third frame okay so here it should be frame okay so four to five pixels along x-axis and along y-axis it's going to be 325 pixels and now let me just copy it so copy and I'll just paste it and now this time it should be my fourth frame and let me just change it to fourth frame and now this time it should be five or five pixels along x-axis uh, is it yep five or five pixels along x-axis uh, yep uh, and then for the y-axis it's just going to be the same and now it is okay so now that's the fourth frame and now it's just going to be the fifth frame so fifth frame and then it's just going to be the fifth frame as well so frame and uh, then it should be six or five pixels along x-axis paste it and then in here we're just going to change it to six frame and then in here it is going to be six frame and then this one is just going to be seven zero five pixels and then finally we will have uh, the seventh frame so right in here it is going to paste it so paste and then this one is just going to be the seventh frame and then this one is just going to be the same frame as well and then this one is just going to be 805 pixels along x-axis okay so now let me just execute this application and you can just see that we have all these frames inside of these cells okay so now i have actually set the background color to of it to white just to show you all these frames but this is not going to be the background color just don't like it just going to change the background color to a hexadecimal value so right in here it is going to be a hexadecimal value which is uh to it uh, and then do it to nine and then we're just going to do it for the remaining frames as well so I'm gonna copy paste copy paste paste and then paste it in here and then paste it right in here as well so paste and uh, then paste it right in here and then finally let's just paste it right here as well okay so now let me just execute this application and you're going to see that the background color is now changed uh, to its previous color okay so now um we're just going to start putting um information inside of these frames Okay, now first of all, we're just going to be putting days in these frames. Like for example, today is Wednesday right here. So the first frame will contain Wednesday, the second will contain Thursday, Friday, and so on. So let's just do it. So right in here, first of all, I'm just going to create labels. So I will just name my first label as uh, day one. So day one uh, is just going to be equal to a billion class and ticket label. And this one is just going to be inside of my first frame. Uh, next what is going to be the font of it so font of it is just going to be Arial, and this is just going to be 20 pixels and uh, then then what is going to be the background color so the background color is going to be a hexadecimal value which is again uh so hexadecimal value which is 20 28 29 okay next uh what is going to be the foreground color so the foreground color is going to be white so right in here, I'm just going to say a foreground color is going to be hexadecimal, hexadecimal value, which is FFF for white. Okay, so now we're just going to need to put this label, set, uh, put this um, day label uh, on the right place. So day one dot place, uh, day one dot place, and we just want to place it 100 pixels along x axis and along y axis. We just want to put it uh, 5 pixels along y axis. Okay, so now we have this label. So right in here, um when the user click on the search icon then we should be able to display the day in the first frame so where is that function okay so now right in here we're just going to do it and um in here we set a command and this is what it is and here i've just first of all set a first equal to um, data which is the class that we have previously imported 
now and this will actually give us the today date and time okay so next in here we're just gonna say day one dot uh config so previously we had created that label day one and i'm just gonna config it and the text uh on this label is now just going to be uh first uh dot uh, strf time and now since we're just only interested in just putting so basically this date time function will give us both the date and then the time but we're only interested in just putting the day so for this we just need to use percentage a and this will actually give us only the day and then our uh, since in here we just put in the text equal to this whole thing so this text on this day one label it is going to be wednesday okay so now let's just execute this application and just see if you're seeing this wednesday or not so let's just see again the way click on the search icon and so you should now be able to see dubai, uh, dubai and then in here you see all this information but in here you just see that we're actually seeing wednesday right here okay now we're just going to do it for the remaining frames as well so first of all let's just create all these labels um right in here we're just going to create all these okay so that's the uh, day one and now we're just going to do it for day two as well so let me just copy this whole thing and uh, let me just place it right in here so first of all let me just minimize this thing and uh, now it's just going to be day two and then day two and then this one is just going to be inside my uh second frame and now in here we just need to change the x position so this is going to be 10 pixels along x axis and uh, 5 pixels along uh, y axis okay so now let me just copy it and let me just paste it right in here and now this one is just going to be day three and then day three and then this one is just going to be my uh third frame so third frame and now let's just do it for the fourth frame as well so fourth frame um but this one is going to be day four and then day four and then this one is going to be inside of my fourth frame so fourth frame and now we're just going to do it for the fifth sixth and seventh play, uh, seventh frame as well so for the fifth it is day five and day five and then this one is just going to be inside of my fifth frame so fifth frame and uh, then in here it's going to be inside of my sixth frame for day six so day six day six and then in here it is going to be inside of the sixth frame so sixth frame okay now finally we're just going to do it for the seventh frame as well so seventh frame and here we have day seven and day seven and then in here we're just going to change it to uh frame. okay so now uh, finally we're just gonna move right in here uh and then we're just going to config these labels all these labels that we have created so this one is uh we have configured the first uh the first uh, day one label and uh, now first of all we just need to get the second day so that is actually the first which is actually this variable plus time delta uh and then in here i'm just going to say days uh equal to one so after it whatever day will be whatever day it will be it is going to be equal to day one so for example in here we have wednesday now day one it is going to be thursday day two is going to be friday and so on so now let's just config day two dot config and text on it is just going to be equal to uh second uh, dot strf uh, and then percentage right here so percentage symbol where is the percentage symbol so percentage okay, okay so now finally what i'm going to do is that i'm going to actually copy uh, these two lines of code so copy and i'll just paste it right in here and now this one is just going to be third and now this is going to be two and then this one is just going to be day three it is going to be uh in here we'll have third and uh, now finally let's just do it for fourth as well so fourth and then this one is just going to be the day three and then this one is just going to be changed to fourth and then finally you just need to do it for five fifth as well so let me just need to name this variable as fifth and then this one it is going to be day four uh, right in here it's going to be day four and then here we just need to change it to fifth and then finally it is going to be six and seven so right in here let me just change it to 
sixth and this is going to be the fifth day so fifth day and here we will have oops we can to change this thing as well day one day two and then obviously day three day four day five and then day six and then here uh is this going to be sixth yep and then finally we will have this information for the seventh frame as well on the seventh level as well actually and there is just the day six and then finally here we will have uh day seven and then in here it is going to be uh the seventh day so seventh and yeah that's all we need to be doing and now let's just execute this application and in here let's just first of all write dubai um dubai and now let's just click on the search icon right here and you should be able to see all these days okay so in here you can just see that we have wednesday and then thursday friday saturday sunday monday and then tuesday okay so all of these days are now pretty much being displayed well actually what you can do is that you can actually decrease the font size right here so that it is actually visible all these days are completely visible inside of these frames okay so uh, in the next in the coming videos we're just going to be putting more information inside of these frames so that we can actually get the weather forecast for all of these days and then we're just going to be putting all this weather forecast in these frames okay so i have all these images placed in my project location and then inside of this folder icon and you can just see all these images right here now we're just going to be displaying all these images and depending upon the weather on that current day on these on the frames that we had previously created so what we're going to do is that first of all we're just going to be creating labels and then on these labels we're just going to be putting these images depending upon the weather on that specific theme so let's just do it so let's just open your so first of all in here we're just going to be creating labels for our images so let me just scroll it down to make sure everything is visible okay so first for the first image i will just name my first image as first image you can just name it anything you want and put it equal to the building plan label and that is going to be inside of my first frame and then the background color of it is just going to be a hexadecimal value which is 282829 uh, okay next um we're just going to place this image so first image dot place uh, and then we're just going to be placing it uh one pixels along x-axis and then 15 pixels along y-axis okay so that's the first image and now let's just do it for the second image so it is going to be second image it's going to be equal to built-in class label and that is going to be inside of my second frame and then the background color which is going to be a hexadecimal value which is 282829 uh like this 22828 and then as well and then finally we're just going to put this image second image not place then we're just going to put it um seven pixels along this axis and then along y axis it should be 20 pixels okay so now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to actually copy uh this line of code i'm just going to do it for the third cell or the third frame uh, so let me just again uh, scroll it down to make sure everything is visible and now this one is just going to be named as third image so third image and next is going to be named as third image and then this one is just going to be inside of my uh third frame so third frame and then the x and y position it is going to be the same and then let's just do it for the fourth frame so in here we just need to just change the name of it so fourth frame so fourth image actually so fourth image and then uh, fourth image and then here we're just going to change it to um fourth frame and then finally we're just going to do it for the fifth sixth and seventh frame as well so paste uh, and then right in here it is going to be the fifth image and then right in here it is going to be changed to fifth image as well and then this one it is going to be on the fifth frame so fifth fifth frame so fifth frame and then let's just do it for the sixth frame as well so right in here sixth frame so here we go sixth frame and then here we go sixth actually the sixth image and then actually it should be inside the sixth frame so sixth frame and then finally we will have the seventh uh, image as well so paste your code uh, and then right in here it is going to be uh, seventh frame the seventh image which is going to be out of my 
seventh frame so right in here we're just going to change it to seventh frame okay so now we have all these image labels and now what we're going to do is that we actually need to put all these images so let's just go to that function um which is the get by that function and right in here we're just going to start putting these images so right in here um let's just add a comment right here and just going to be the first cell and you know right in here i will just name my first image as the first day image as first day image and that is just going to be the json data because we're just going to be putting on uh, the image uh, that a specific image depending upon the weather condition in that region okay so that is what i'm just using data and inside we have a um, key called daily and then since it is actually going to be the uh, first day so the first day weather uh, weather update is at the zeroth index uh, and then in here the zeroth index after that we have another attribute which is the uh, weather attribute uh, and then in here we just have that zeroth index and then in here we have that thing called icon okay so now first of all let's just print out the first day image so print the first day image okay so um, let's just do it for the remaining images and then we're just going to do it um yeah let's just do it later on okay so that's the first cell and um next let's just do it for second cell so second cell and then let me just scroll it down to make sure everything is visible and um, why not let's copy this thing so I'll just copy i'm just going to paste it right in here and this one is just going to be the second day image uh, so second day image and then in here we're just going to change it to the first index because we just want to get the um second day uh, second day uh update about the weather and this one is then at the first index so the first day is at the zeroth index and then the second day weather condition is at the first index and then this one is just going to be at the first one as well and then we just want to basically print out the second day image as well okay so right in here it is going to be the uh second day image as well okay, so second day image and uh, now in here we're just going to do it for the third third cell and now it just paste that code right in here and um, that is going to be the third day image and then this one is just going with the second index and then second index and then let me just print out that image as well uh which is the uh, third day image and then let's just do it for the fourth cell so fourth cell and let's just paste code once again and this one is just going to be named as fourth day image and then this one is at the end number three and then we just need to change it right in here as well and then finally we just need to change it um right here as well okay so that the four day image and now let's just do it for the fifth sixth seventh uh fifth sixth and seventh as well so let's just do it for the fifth fifth cell i just paste that code and then this one just need to be changed to fifth uh so fifth image and this one is at index number four and then index number four in my json file which is stored in this variable json data okay so let's just change it to fifth as well and then finally let's just go for the sixth and seventh as well so it was for event and this one is for the sixth cell Paste that code and right in here it is going to be the sixth day image uh which is at index number five and which is at index number five and then this one needs to be changed to sixth day image and then finally we will have the seventh day image as well so uh seventh cell uh, paste that code and right in here it is going to change it to seventh seven damage and in here it is going to be at next number six uh, and then index six and then finally we're just going to change it to um basically it should be uh the seventh image the seventh day image all right so now let's just see what result we just got after just printing these images so let's just execute this application and let's just write down the name of any city like for example dubai let's click on the search icon right here and um, let's just see okay so we're just getting this error it is saying that it is actually out of index 
Okay, so I think uh, that we do not need to change this thing right here. Um, it should be at the zero index. So zero index and then zero index. Uh, and then the zero index and then the zero index. Uh, zero index uh, and then finally the zero index. Okay, so now let's just execute this application once again. Uh, hopefully this time it should work absolutely fine. So the way the search icon and uh, let's just see if there is any error or not. Okay, so there is now no error at this point in here. You can just see that we have all these um, basically depending upon the um, weather condition it is actually printing out all these images and if you just look at this file we just named these images something like this as well so in our json file uh in our json file we have basically these uh, images named like this so for example if um let me just show you this image uh which is 01d we just start with 01d so right in here uh 01d is actually this image so when there is a absolutely clear sun then in json file we have this image named as 01d and that is and this is how we actually named as well and this is uh, what the json file has returned as well so in here we actually first of all check like what is the weather condition uh, on the very first day then the weather uh, then the weather condition on the very first day since it is absolutely a clear sun so that is why it's just saying that it's actually basically and we actually named this image like this and now we're just going to actually display this image according to um according to this uh, title so this that's, that is why we actually named this image is something like this like for example in the um second day on um, the second day it, 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 the json file has written 0 to d and in here we just look at the 0 to d image then it is partially cloudy and you can just see that uh, when it is partially cloudy json file is returning uh, basically this thing 0 to d okay so now uh things are just now getting um a lot easier well this story is getting longer so let's just continue this um let's just continue this application in the next video all right, so now let's just start putting all these images um, on our uh, inside of our frames. So let's just do it. So first of all, we just need to load these photos. So um, since it is our first day image, we're just going to name this photo as photo one. You can just name it anything you want. And this is going to be equal to the image TK that we have imported uh, and then this class photo image. And now in here, I'm just going to say that the file of it is just going to be uh, basically an f string um, and then inside of this f string basically it is actually out of this folder icon that we have basically this icon and then depending upon what this adjacent file has returned so in here which is going to actually like this and then we're just going to say that the first day image and our first day image is 01201d that this json file has returned depending upon the weather condition and then basically uh, after that basically all my images are ending with at the rate of 2x all of my all of these images you can check it out all of these are ending with at the rate of uh, 2hc and all of the 2x and then all the images are and are basically dot png images so right in here and uh, i'm just saying that uh, at the rate uh, 2x and then the extension of all of these images are dot png okay so now what i'm going to do is that i will just say that now my first image uh, dot config so dot config um actually it is not first the image it's just first image because this is what this label needs as so first image dot uh config um and now just say that the image of it is just going to be uh photo one okay so once it is done and now let's say that the first image um dot image is just going to be named as photo one okay so that's for the first cell and uh, now let's just do it for the second cell as well so right in here first of all uh let me just minimize it and now right in here what i'm gonna do is that uh, i'm just gonna do it for the second uh second photo as well so um, right in here uh what i need to do is um first of all i've just created variable and i've just named it as image and now i'll just say that uh image dot 
open, you know, open something, um, and that is from the using the F string, uh, and that is actually inside of this folder icon, and then um, it is actually the second day image. So second day image, uh, and then it is actually ending uh, with this uh text and then this extension dot png okay so um, this is what it is and now we just actually need to resize it because the second cell is pretty much smaller than the first cell so that is where actually we need to resize it so i will just name this um resized image as resized image you can just name it anything you want and that will just put it equal to image dot resize and so we just want to resize it um 50 pixels by 50 pixels along uh, y axis so 50 pixels along x axis and 50 pixels along y axis okay now what i'm going to do is i'll just say that photo to um it's just going to be uh image uh, image tk dot um photo image uh photo image and then we just want to talk about the resized image that we have resized okay so that's uh, the um let's equal to photo two and now i will just say that the second image um second image dot config because i'm going to config the uh second image label image of it is just going to be equal to photo two not like this it is photo two uh next i will just say that um second image second image dot image is just going to be equal to photo to okay so that's for the second thing and now for the third cell what i'm going to do is that i'm going to actually copy it and i'm going to actually paste it right in here and uh, now we do not need to make um, any changes uh, all we just need to be doing is that we're just going to name it to uh, photo 3 and uh, in here it is going to be resized image um and then in here photo three and um yep that's all we need to be doing i think uh photo three image or resize and then obviously this one is it's going to be third day image so third third day image uh, and then we have resized that image uh, and then this one is just going to be equal to photo three and then this one is just going to be photo three as well and then in here it is going to be the third image um obviously so third image and then this one needs to be changed to third image as well okay so yeah that's all we to be doing for the third cell and now let's just do it for the fourth cell so um, for the fourth cell right in here so that's for the fourth cell okay, so in here it's going to be the uh fourth and the image so i think this fourth day image and then in here it's going to be for four and then in here it is going to be the fourth image uh fourth image label so fourth image uh fourth image or config and that's going to be equal to photo four and we just need to change it to photo four and then in here we need to change it to fourth image so fourth image now similarly we just need to do it for the fifth cell so just and uh, right in here it is going to be changed to fifth uh, day image so it is going to be fifth day image uh, and then we will resize it just going to change it to uh, photo five um and then here it is going to be fifth image so fifth image and then here it is going to be changed to fifth image and that's going to be equal to photo five and then in here um let's just paste this once again and in here it is going to be the sixth day image so sixth day image and then in here it is going to be photo six um and then in here it is going to be the sixth image uh sixth image and then it is going to be equal to photo six photo six and then in here it is going to be the sixth image okay sixth image and then finally we just need to do it for the seventh cell as well um we have image and then in here it is going to be the seventh day image so seventh day image uh, and then in here it is going to be named as photo seven and uh, in here we just need to change it to uh seventh image uh so seventh image and then this needs to be changed to 
photo seven here and here and then in here we just need to change it to uh seventh image as well all right so yeah that's all uh, that's all we need to be doing um let us now execute it and hopefully we just gonna see all these images depending upon the weather condition in that region so uh, let's just execute this code uh so let us execute uh and now let's just uh, check it out for the way now press on the search icon and uh let's just see if you're seeing it or not okay so okay so we are actually getting this a uh, weird error and that's because uh, basically this this error is uh inside of basically this line then to just trying to execute so let's just go to this line where we're actually getting this error um here yep so we're actually getting this error somewhere right here now do not allow you to make uh, a lot of requests in a less amount of time and we are actually making a lot of uh, requests in such a small amount of time so what we need to be doing if you just got such type of error then you actually need to wait for like five to ten minutes um in order for this error to be removed so just wait for like five four minutes so i'm just gonna wait for five to ten minutes and then i'm gonna be actually back with this video okay so now let's just execute this application once again after a certain amount of time and let's just type here the way and just click on the search icon and hopefully this time it will work absolutely fine and you're going to see that it is working absolutely fine but one problem that we're actually getting so just first of all see that on wednesday we have the complete sun on thursday we have partially cloudy and then partially cloudy on friday but in here you're going to see that we just cannot see these thursday friday and then so on so we actually need to decrease the font size right here and we can actually do it uh, by just going right here um somewhere where are these labels okay so in here we have these frames clock and these all these things and yeah on day one we first of all need to decrease the font size of our uh, first label to 15 cells uh and then for the second day uh let's just remove this whole thing right from here because we're just going to use the default um default font uh, and then just let's uh, remove this thing right from here as well and then let's just remove um this thing right from here as well and then let's just do it for the day five and day six as well so on day five uh, and then finally let's just remove it for from uh, day six and then finally let's just remove it for day seven as well because we're just going to be using the default font uh, and then font font size mm -hmm. okay so now let's just execute this application um and hopefully this time it will work absolutely fine so let's just execute okay so now you can see that it is actually now looking absolutely fine we have wednesday uh, the font size is just perfect it is completely sunny and then we have thursday partially cloudy friday we have partially cloudy as well and on saturday we have once again complete sunny and then on Monday and Tuesday, we have complete sunny as well. One and Sunday, we have again partially cloudy in Dubai. So now in here, you're going to see that we have um, this temperature. Uh, we have basically some um, some space left in these cells. So what we're going to do is that we're just going to basically uh, place the temperature, the average temperature in these cells in these empty spaces. All right, so now we're just going to be showing the day and night temperature in all these cells. Um, so, for example, on Wednesday, we're just going to show the day temperature and, the and then the night temperature. On Thursday, we're just going to show the day temperature and night temperature and then so on for the remaining uh, days as well. So, let's just do it. So, first of all, we're just going to create labels, uh, the temperature labels, and then we're just going to be setting the text of day and night uh, temperature on these labels. So, let's just do it. So, we're just going to be creating labels uh, right in here here in these uh, cells uh, so for example uh, for day one which is for the first cell which is going to create so um, we're just going to name this label as day one uh, temp and uh, it is going to be equal to a label that is going to be inside of my first frame uh, next the background color of which is going to be hexadecimal value uh, which is uh, 2828 and then 9 uh, 3929 okay and then we're just going to set the uh, foreground color as well so the foreground color of it is just going to mean again a hexadecimal value which is uh, 57 uh 57 ad 
uh, double up. Uh, next, uh, let's just set the font size as well. So font of it is just going to be Arial and then 15 pixels and then bold. Okay, so um, this is actually uh, the um, day one temp label. And now we just need to put that uh, label um, dot place uh, location. And then this one should be at 100 pixels along X axis. And then along Y axis, it should be 50 pixels. Okay, so that's the day one. Uh, and now let's just do it for the day two label. Uh, day two temp label. So right in here, we're just going to name it as day two. Then I'm pretty good with this class uh, label. Uh, this one should be inside of my uh, second frame. Uh, and then the background color and everything else, it's just going to be the same. So right in here, I'm going to actually copy this thing and we will not be setting the font uh, the font size of the second and then the remaining labels. We're just going to leave it uh, leave it as default. And uh, we're just getting this error right here. Uh, second frame, background. Um, Okay, so let's just see. Okay, so this one needs to be changed to uh, inhale and just get rid of this thing. Uh, and yeah, now it is looking fine. And now we just need to place it at, um, oops, not right here. Actually, uh, what I've done. Okay, so actually uh, what I need to be doing is then I actually need to copy this thing and actually need to paste it right in here. Okay, I'll just paste it and we just not we're just going to be using this font. We're just going to use it only for uh, the temp, day one temp label because that cell, the first cell is actually bigger than the other cells. So that is why we're just using the font, but we're just going to use the uh, default font for the remaining cells. Okay, so now let's just scroll it down and we just need to put it. So day two temp dot place, we just need to put it at the right place and it should be um, two pixels on x-axis and 70 pixels along y-axis. All right, so now let me just copy uh, this whole thing and let's just paste it uh, right here. So that's just going to be day three, uh, day three, and then this one actually needs to be in the third frame. So third frame and um, this is going to be the same place. And uh, yeah, let's just do it for the fourth. Um, fourth day temp so day four uh let me just first of all scroll it down to make sure everything is visible so day four and then day four and then this one needs to be in the fourth frame so fourth frame and then let's just do it for the fifth frame as well first of all scroll it, scrolling it down to make sure everything is visible so that's going to be day five temp so day five temp and then day five temp and then this one needs to be in the uh, fifth frame, so fifth frame, and everything else is the same. And let's just do it for the sixth frame as well. So um, day six, and then day six, uh, and then this one needs to be in the sixth frame. Uh, and uh, yep, uh, and then I'll just do it for the seventh frame as well. So right in here, let's just do the seventh frame, and it is day seven, day seven, and then. And here it is actually the seven. All right, so now we are done with the labels. Now let's just do in here, let's go to that function. Um, we'll be just getting all the data. So now right in here, in here, we're just gonna basically set uh, all these things. And um, well, actually we're just gonna be setting it right in here so that's the first cell and let's just do it right here okay so um, first of all i'm gonna basically create um two things first of all i actually need to get the day temperature and then i need to get the night temperature for my json json file so first of all i'm just gonna get the date or uh, the uh, first day temperature um and that's uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna just name it as temp day one you can just name it anything you want and put it equal to that json file that we have previously extracted. And now right in here, what we are interested in is we just getting the daily and then the first temperature. Um, and that we are interested in the uh, daytime temperature. So in here, we're just gonna say temp, and then we just say here, temp. So this is what we're interested in. And now we're just gonna get the night temperature as well. So um, it is just going to be uh, night one. And again, that is going to be equal to my JSON, and that is going to be again daily. 
um, again, it is going to be a root index. You can just check this whole thing from the JSON file and then temp and then in here, we just want to talk about the night temperature. Okay, so that's the day temperature and that is one is the night temperature. And now in here, previously we had created that label in this video and now we're just going to config this label by putting the day temperature and then the night temperature. So the day temperature is stored in this variable temp day one and then the night temperature is stored in this variable temp night one. So now all we need to do is to actually configure the day one temp label. So day one, uh, day one temp dot config. And now I'm going to say that the text, the text on it is just going to be equal to an F string because we just want to basically render something. So I'm going to say that the, the day temperature is, um, say that it is temp day one, um, while the night temperature is, so I'm going to actually move to the next line. So slash, slash N, and now I'm going to say that the night temperature is just, it's going to say, say that uh, night, uh, and then this colon, and then two brackets, uh, and then it is going to be temp night one. Um, and yeah, that's all we need to be doing for the first day. And now we just execute this. Let me just see if just we are just seeing the uh, the day and night temperature on our first cell or not. So let's just execute and um, let's just check out for again Dubai. You can just check for any other city. I'm just checking again again for Dubai, but you can just check for any other city that you want in which you are living in. Let's click on the search icon right here and um, you should be able to see so in here the day temperature is 38.81 degrees celsius while the night temperature on wednesday is going to be 29.98 29.98 degrees celsius okay now similarly we're just going to do it for thursday friday saturday sunday monday and tuesday as well so let's just do it uh, let's do it so right in here what you can now do is that you can actually copy this thing uh, and now you're just going to paste it right in here for the second day and for the second night uh, and now this one um, needs to be changed to uh sorry in here we have a one and we have one and then in here we just need to change it to uh temp night two and then temp um uh, day two okay so now i think yeah up in here we just need to change it to day two day two temp dot config so we're just talking about now the second day okay so now let's just execute this application and uh, let's just search out again dubai and now let's just click on the search icon and um hopefully it is going to see it for thursday as well so on thursday the temperature at daytime is just going to be this is obviously the predicted one no one knows about the actual one but this is actually the predicted one that is just going to be 35.95 uh, degrees celsius um at daytime and at night time it is going to 34.56 okay so basically the current temperature is displayed right here as well so um, today is wednesday in dubai and uh, in here you can see temperature uh, at this time is 38.81 degrees 81 degrees celsius and this is what it is showing right here which is 38.81 because it's daytime in dubai at this moment you can see the time here is 12 17 pm and it is showing us the current temperature which is 38.81 on night it is just going to lower down to 29 9.98 while for tomorrow night it is going to be 31.56 okay now let's just do it for the remaining fields and then we are done with this application so what i'm going to do is then i'm going to actually copy this whole code once again and we're just going to do it uh, paste it right in here but first of all let me just minimize the screen and we're just going to change it to temp3 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 and in here we're just going to change it to temp3 uh temp three and then obviously it's just going to be the third day temp so day three temp and uh, now let's just do it for the fourth uh fourth temperature as well so it is going to be changed to uh temperature four temperature night four and so uh, here we just need to change it to um here actually this one actually needs to be changed to two as well Okay, so now right in here, it just need to be changed to day three, and then here we just need to change it to uh, day three as well, and obviously we just need to change it to uh, day four temp. Yep, day three, and here we have day four. 
okay so now uh, in here obviously we just need to change it to uh, day four and then uh, temp night four all right so now let's just paste the code once again so paste it and now it is the fifth night so fifth and then fifth and then obviously we just need to change it to four now four uh, and in here we just need to change it to five and then here we just need to change it to five and then in here we just need to change it to five okay so now let's just do it for uh, these as well um paste it and in here we have the sixth uh sixth. Uh, and then in here we just need to change it to five because the sixth day temperature is at index for five and let's just change it to the x temperature day temperature night six and then in here obviously it is day number six so let's just change on that label to a six temp okay so now finally let's just display it more last time paste it one last time and then we'll just change it to day seven day seven um at index number six index number six and then finally it is uh day seven temp um change it to seven uh, and then finally change it to seven as well okay so now i think that we are pretty much done uh or maybe 100 percent done with this application and now let's just finally execute this application so let's just execute and now you can just write down any temperature of your uh, any uh, city of your choice um and let's just um uh, press on the search icon right here and um Again, you can just see that we now have the temperature displayed in all these fields, the day and night temperature displayed in each of the cell. So it is uh, 12 to uh, 12 21 p.m. Uh, in Dubai right now. We are actually at 25.1 degree north uh, and then 55.2 degree east. The current temperature is existing. The current humidity is 15%. We have this pressure. The wind speed is 4.12 meter per second. While the description is clear sky. On Wednesday, the temperature is going to be this one. Night a night temperature is going to be 29.98. On um, Sunday, the temperature is going to be on daytime. It is going to be 35.3 degrees Celsius. On nighttime, it's going to be 30.41 and uh, yeah now we have one two three four five six seven days uh, of temperature being displayed using the one call api uh that uh, that is absolutely free of cost as well up to a certain limit i think that it is um we can actually make 1000 calls per day i think there is a lot um a lot of a uh, big limit that we can actually use to get further information about any any other city and now they just change the city to something else like for example New York. I've been to New York last month. So let's just check out the temperature of New York. Okay, so it is again, it is 4.22 a.m. Uh, the temperature right now, the daytime temperature is 16.77, while the night temp nighttime temperature on Wednesday is um, 11.72 on Thursday is a complete sunny tomorrow is going to be complete sunny as well um and then on friday is going to be cloudy weather um and in here you will see the description we have it is saying it is broken clouds wow means that there are clouds clouds that are scattered away from each other that is what you're saying broken clouds and on friday the temperature is going to be 16.7 on night time is going to be 15.39 and uh, you can see that the temperature between day and night in new york is uh, not uh, the difference between the day and night temperature in new york is not too much while in dubai and other parts of asia the temperature between day and night the difference between the temperature between day and night is pretty much um, bigger as compared to new york um now in here you can just search any other city of your choice and it's just going to tell you the temperature um it's just going to tell you the all this information the temperature humidity pressure wind speed description of the current day well it's going to give you the generic idea about the remaining days uh, like how it's going to be well if you want you can actually put down the humidity pressure wind speed for these days as well but these uh, cells are now pretty much smaller to put all this information here as well so we're just gonna we have just displayed um all this information just for the current day uh, which is wednesday today in new york and dubai as well so yeah that's all uh, that's all we have for this application so i hope that you just really like this application and um well i mean you can just uh, make this application look more awesome i just tried my best to make this application look awesome 
um, but if you want you can actually modify this application and just change it according to your will and if you just want to make this application um, you know you just want to use it for the professional one then in here um, what you just need to be doing is that you need to actually purchase like for example on one we have used the one called api 3.0 which is a new one but right in here just go to the professional collection um you can see all of these are actually paid um you can actually buy all these things so like for example in which is go to the pricing section um this is just in case you just want to purchase um you you just want to use uh, your uh, application for uh, for a professional use or uh, on a real level by applying by basically deploying your application on the server side like for example in here you're going to see that we have the startup plan which is 30 uh, gbp i think it's the english currency uh, per month and then for the developer one is 140 gb per second on the professional one you have 370 gb on the enterprise line is 1500 gbp per month but in here you can see that for this thing you can actually make 200 000 calls per minute and then how much it is oh my god i think it's 5 billion calls per month which is a lot okay so for this you can actually get three or four calls for five days or live for, for calls for four for four days and then daily for call forecast for 16 days and then climate forecast for 30 days as well wow so depending upon how you were used you actually have to use um well previously we have used the completely free one um this api this this thing you just want to get the api of it this one is absolutely free of course you can just make 60 calls per minute and then 1 million calls per month um it will never cost you any money but we have used the one call api 3.0 where we can make 1000 calls per day but if you just want to make more calls per day then you actually have to pay for it um and if you just want to make uh, you know millions of calls per day or millions of calls per um per month then you actually have to use either the professional one or the enterprise one or the developer one um depending upon your use uh, and depending upon like for example you just want other people uh, like for example if some other people want to know information like for example you've deployed your application on the server end and say that um someone just want to know about the weather can weather about um his city and then say that your application is actually getting a lot of uh, viewership then depending upon how many people are actually making the call you have to purchase one of them okay so yeah that's all we have for this application now in the next video what i'm going to do is that i'm going to actually explain this entire code one last time so if you have any problem um well actually there is a lot of um a lot of copy and paste uh, in this application but uh, this is just to make this application look more professional we do not need this line of code because we already have to reach and everything from taken there so um, yeah i'm going to be explaining this code one, la one last time uh, in the next video okay so now i'm going to be explaining this entire code one last time so if you have any problem understanding anything uh, it should just got clear so um, first of all we imported all the basic things and make sure that you have installed all the modules just go to the very first video of this um, section where we have downloaded all these modules the time zone that is the geopy module and then date time is actually a built-in module to python so you do not need to install it separately it is import we have downloaded the request module and then we have installed the pytz uh, module as well and then we have installed the build module as well for uh, images okay next we have basically we have our window which is our main window and make sure that your entire tick go must go in between this line of code and then basically your main loop function which is actually this thing so all your tick code must go in between these two lines of code any tick code outside these two lines of code will not be accepted by python and you will end up getting an error okay so we have set the title we have set the specific size we have set the background color uh, and we do not want this window to be resized along x and y axis okay so um, first of all um uh, in here first of all we have the image icon uh, which is actually uh to the left side of our title so we have basically this image which is our logo image uh, and then we have basically basically laid down this photo image um, and then we have this label and then in here we have basically for the very for, for the first day we have made all this label to get the temperature humidity 
uh, and then pressure, wind speed, and then the order description about the weather. Okay, next we have the uh, search image uh, that we have loaded right here, and then we have created that label and put that search image on that label. Uh, and then we have the weather image uh, that we have basically displayed on our entry field. So in here we have created the entry field, but first of all, we have um, placed that um, weather image um, and it is actually on our entry field. Okay, so next um, we have actually created this frame uh, right in here and then we have created two boxes. So next we have created um, labels, uh, all these labels, uh, and then we have put all these labels um, inside of our frame. Uh, so in here we have created this uh, big frame and then inside of that frame we have basically all these labels. Next we have the clock on the clock which is going to display the time and then time zone we will display the time zone and then we have the longitude and latitude which is going to display the uh, longitude and latitude. Um, and then in here we have the temperature label, humidity label, pressure, wind label, description label. And then in here we have the first frame um, we have created and then which is going to basically um, on for day one we are actually putting the day one label inside of our first frame and then we are actually putting all the images, the temperature, uh, all these things in a basically um, uh, in a frame depending upon so the first uh, first day things all the things that are related to the first day are going to be placed in the first frame all the things that are related to the second day are going to be put in the second frame and so on but in here where we have created the uh, search uh, search image um, right in here you can see that we have the um, we have actually this button where we have put our search image but when this image gets clicked what it's going to do is that it's just going to get the weather information about the city that the user has entered in the input field. Now in here you can actually do the validation um, as well. So say that the user click on the search icon but say that the user has not inputted anything in the uh, input field. Say that the user has not inputted any city name for, for which he just want to get the weather information. Then you can actually create um, kind of just saying in here you will first of all before it actually got so let's just first of all go to that function so on that function first of all what it's actually doing is that uh, it is first of all getting whatever information that we have inside the text field whatever city that we have inputted on our text field but say that there is actually nothing uh, right here in um, in the city field the user has not inputted anything in the city field then what you can do is that in here you can actually put it inside the if block and you can just set if t equal to equal to nothing or if series e is not equal to nothing then you actually need to execute this entire code so you can actually put this whole code inside of the if block else then you can actually go to the else block and then create a label which is just going to be an error label and that error label the text on that error label is just going to be please input the uh, city name for which you just want to get the weather information of so this is just kind of a validation and just take it as an assignment of you just do it uh, as a part of your assignment just validate this application by yourself because it's pretty much simple i have already explained it and it is not a big deal doing it okay so next we have just um once we have got the uh, city in this variable city then we are actually getting that information the time zone and then longitude and latitude the current time in that um, the current time in that city all this information right here uh, in these lines of code like for example we're just getting the current time right here and then just placing uh, the current time right in here and then we're actually getting the longitude and latitude and then just placing the longitude and latitude up to one decimal places uh, in the longitude and latitude label that we have previously created and then we're actually in here we're actually getting we're actually getting the first of all the time zone right in here in that specific region uh, like for example in Dubai or New York and then we're actually placing that time zone on our GUI window as well. Okay next um, we have created this API key right here you can just create your own API key uh, you, the one call uh, we have just made it using one call but you can just uh, if you want you can just do it for the free plan as well that we have uh, previously used in the couple of first videos. So um, next uh, we have the JSON file for one call API and in here we actually got that API basically the JSON file 
of that specific API, that is the one called API, and then store that JSON file in this variable JSON data. Now this JSON, da J JSON data or JSON file contain the information about, now we can actually use the JSON file to get information about everything. Like we can actually get out information about the current weather, we can get out information about the tomorrow weather, the day after tomorrow weather, and then the coming um, seven days. So we can actually do it using this JSON file. Like for example, in here, we just got the run temperature. You actually need to study this JSON file, like what else you can actually do with this JSON file. So for example, what you can do is that you can actually print out this uh, JSON data file, or what you can do is that you can actually go to this one call API right in here. So this is actually the JSON file. Like for example, with the current weather, you can actually see what is the uh, sunrise time and then what is the sunset time. And then you can actually check uh, like how many clouds or what is the percentage of clouds um, at that time at a specific time uh, at the current time. And then what else you can just do is that you can actually check um, the fields like, what is the temperature is fields like, you can actually check the wind speed, you can actually one degree and all these things. Just go ahead and just simply study this JSON file and uh, just modify this application according to your own will. That is totally up to you. Like for example, in here on daily time, you can actually check the moon rise, the moon set, and then the moon phase. You can actually ch check out the minimum and then the maximum temperature at daytime and then the minimum and um, maximum temperature at the evening and morning time as well. So um, there are like so many things that you can just go ahead and just uh, do it using this JSON file. I have done it. I have done some basic things as well. Like for example, I've just got the temperature, the pressure, humidity, clouds. If you want, you can just get whatever information from the JSON file. Okay, so um, right in here, I've just got the current temperature, humidity, pressure, wind speed, and then the aura description about the weather. So right in here, we're just getting the temperature in Celsius. And uh, well, in here, in this API, if you do not have this thing, uh, which is units equal to metric, then by default, it's just going to give you the temperature in Kelvin, which is the system international unit for temperature. But in here, if you specify n units equal to metric, then it can actually give you the temperature in Celsius and uh, Fahrenheit. Okay, so next we have the humidity. We're actually configuring these labels that we have created. And then in here, we're actually putting all these images. We're actually configuring, first of all, loading all these images. So um, all these images, depending. So like, for example, if uh, that is the, let me just show you. So if that is actually the um, the first day, if that is the completely sunny, then it has, it will actually return a specific code and we have actually named that code. Uh, we actually named our images according to those codes so that our images are going to be displayed according to the temperature, the overall temperature we have in that region. So um, I have explained this thing previously and then in here we're actually getting the day and night temperature for the first day and then the second day, the third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, and seventh day. And yeah, that is that is that is all we need to be doing. And in here, we're actually displaying the uh, the current the current day. So you just want to get the current day in here, you just need to use percentage A, which is for getting the current, uh, which is for getting the day and not the time and date. We just actually, we just want to basically get the uh, day and that is why we're just using this percentage A here. And then similarly, we're just using for day two, day three, like for example, Wednesday, and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Monday, and Tuesday. And yeah, that's all. Uh, that's all we have for this application. So I hope that you just like this application. Well, uh, once you are actually done with this application, just email me that you are done with this application. If you have any problem understanding anything, or if you're just getting some error, now you need to make sure that you have your internet connection because it is actually getting the weather data from the weather station. So you need to make sure that you have your internet connection before you just get any kind of information from the weather station. So I hope that you like this application and if you have any problem, just let me know directly through a message. You can email me, you can ask your question in the question answer section or you can, and once you are done with this application, just share your code with other people in this um with other people and um well i would just suggest you to just uh, modify this application uh, just make it look more awesome uh just try to make it like more cool looking uh, and then to share your code uh, with other people um and uh, i'm just gonna give you my feedback uh once you are done with this application so yeah thank you for watching and um that's it for this application